Apparently, you can see me. I can't see you, but the scientists and engineers have assured me that this is perfectly usual, although I must say, I am a bit disconcerted. This is the first of what we hope to be weekly television broadcasts from us here in London to all five of you with television sets. We had a discussion about which way I should look when I'm doing this, and we all agreed that appearing in profile is what looks most normal. I'm now going to hand you over to my colleague, Mr. Stanley Temp, a quite brilliant man, to continue with the broadcast. It's me. And may I say that who you were looking at before it was me is also quite a devastating genius. Excuse me, but I can't possibly allow that to go unchallenged. You feel hot. My colleague is far too kind to me. I couldn't possibly be far too kind to such a brilliant man. He's brilliant. Now, here at television, we're very keen to find out the properties of this exciting new device. Does it work like a telephone? You can hear us, but can we hear you? So we're going to carry out an experiment. When I say go, I want you all to shout, hello there. Go. Hello there. Yes, I got something. <laughs> I distinctly got something. Well, that's very... Oh, I I'm just being told in my earpiece, which you, you may be able to make out. <laughs> I'm, I'm just being told in my earpiece that apparently four of the five television sets currently in use are actually in our technical room next door. So we're not 100% sure whether I was hearing you through television or, or just through a door. Uh, is there any way of finding out? I, I'm, I'm just being told through my earpiece that there isn't. Or, or at least I think I'm being told through my earpiece. I, I could be hearing that through a door as well. <laughs> now we don't even know if the earpiece works. This really is one step forward, two steps back. My ear hurts. So, Mr. Winkleman, tell us about this rather splendid vase that we're both looking at. The vibration. The vibration. I can't stand it. It's all right, Mr. Winkleman. It's quite normal. It's just the thermonuclear radion machine that we use to generate the television. It's quite safe. <laughs> Although, a rather amusing side effect is that all of our real hair fell out in the first 48 hours. <laughs> You were saying, the Mars. Um, yes, uh, well, it's a family heirloom which I think dates from 1760s. Well, that's fascinating. And I'd just like to point out to viewers that it's only through the new magic of television that they can actually see us looking at this vase and describing it to them. Have you got hot balls too? <laughs> Good morning, housewives and layabouts of the British Empire. This is television talking in your head. Welcome to this, the first experimental broadcast of television during the day, or as we call it, Elevens' television. But first, the king. You're watching television. Stay tuned. At this time tomorrow, another chance to catch footage of Hitler's corpse, where pictures of the charred remains of Corporal Hitler are accompanied by a selection of Vera Lynn's B-sides. But now, our new daily conversation program hosted by Mrs. Patricia Wilberforce, the Mrs. Patricia Wilberforce program. Good morning, ladies and the war wounded. My name is Mrs. Patricia Wilberforce. Today we will be discussing real life sticky situations as much as is seemly. My first guest is Mr. Albert Compton, whose wife claims he has a tendency to behave in an inappropriate manner. <laughs> Mr. Compton, do be seated. Oh, I don't like to make a fuss. Oh, it's always like this. I'm sorry, but we'll have to stop it there, as Mrs. Compton has said fuck. <laughs> oh, I do beg your pardon, viewers. Mrs. Compton didn't say fuck after all. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Albert Compton. My next guest is Miss Margaret Blyton, who, following an incident in the blackout, has got herself in the family way. <laughs> and I'm sure I speak for all of us when I say that I hope that Miss Blyton's unfortunate fiancé insists on a deoxyribonucleic acid test when the little bastard is whelped. <laughs> Join me next time on the Mrs. Patricia Wilberforce program when I'll be telling the shocking story of Mrs. Elsie Taylor, who freely admits to taking two sherries before dinner and whom I shall be having imprisoned for delinquency. Goodbye. 